This A-level question proved really difficult and highlighted poor understanding of the subject. So here is the actual question. We are at an airport and the conveyor belt for suitcases moves at a constant speed of 1.5 meters per second. Okay, we're given some masses and we have some diagrams over here. Don't you find it a little bit annoying when in a free body diagram, all the forces don't seem to act at exactly the same point? Anyways, by using a vector triangle or by resolving forces, calculate the magnitude of the forces F and R. I'm definitely gonna be resolving forces. I'm not the biggest fan of vector triangles. How about you? Let me know, which one do you prefer? Vector triangles or forces resolving? First thing to note in problems such as these is that the weight can be resolved into two components. Components. So we are going to have W sine theta, which is going to act along here. Also, we're going to have W cos theta, which is going to be the vertical component. So in order for this object to be moving at a constant speed as said in the actual question, then all the forces must be balanced. So this means that F will have to be equal to W, which is mg, sine of theta, which is 30 degrees. So mg, what was the mass in this question? Eight kilograms, 8.0 times 9.81. Multiply this by the sine of 30. And that's gonna round up to around 39 Newtons up to two significant figures. On the other hand, the normal reaction R will be given by mg cos of 30 degrees, which is going to be equal to 8.0 times 9.81 multiplied by the cosine of 30. And this here is going to give us around 68 newtons. So 39 and then 68. Okay, next one. The figure shows the suitcase and the forces acting on it at the line labeled y, y prime. Okay, so now we have the suitcase is actually turning around this line. The center of mass of the suitcase is now moving at 1.5 meters per second along a semicircular arc of radius two meters. Calculate the magnitude of the centripetal force acting on the suitcase. So far, not so bad. We're given the mass, which was eight. We're given the radius and the speed. So we can just use F is equal to mv squared over r. So what is this gonna give me? 8.0 times 1.5 squared divided by the radius, which is two. And now for the more interesting part. When the suitcase is at the line y, y prime, the magnitude of the force f is larger and the magnitude of the force r, so that's the normal reaction, is smaller than at x, x prime, which is basically when it's moving along at a constant speed without turning. Explain why this is so. Okay, so our first job in any describe and explain or complicated looking question is just to understand what's going on. So I'm just gonna make a couple of notes and I'm gonna say that y, y prime is when it's rotating, when it's turning, when it's performing circular motion, and x, x prime is when it's not turning and just moving at a constant speed. So the two force body diagrams are a little bit different. When we're not turning, you can see that the magnitude of the force is not as large. Those two should be, by the way, equal. I should draw them more or less equal like so. But what we must really answer is why are those two forces, well, different? What's different in those two situations? If the object, if the suitcase is actually turning, there needs to be a net resultant centripetal force towards the center. Now, I really like this question because it showcases that the centripetal force is not just a random force that appears when something is turning, it's provided by a component and one of the forces that is already present. So in this case, the radius of the turning is somewhere here. So we need a force which has a component to the left. Well, R is pointing up and to the right, can't be R, 
W is pointing straight downwards, it's not going to make a turn. However, F is pointing up and to the left. Therefore, the frictional force is the only force that can make a turn. If this conveyor belt was made out of something low friction like ice, it's not going to turn. Okay, let's try and put this into four marks. So at y, y prime, we can say that, let's just write this, the suitcase must be turning and hence there must be a resultant force acting on it. The only force that has a component towards the center is F, so therefore F must increase. Now here's where it gets really tricky. So let me try and draw this. Imagine that F was even larger. So let's say something like, oh, that was terrible. Let's try and draw this again. Imagine that F was even larger. So something like this. If F becomes really, really big, the horizontal component of F will also increase, meaning that there's gonna be a greater centripetal force and the suitcase will be moving faster. But if the horizontal component of F increases, so does the vertical component. And if the vertical component of F increases, there's not going to be a need for such a big R component, for such a large normal reaction. We're not gonna be pushing the ground as much because the resultant between F and W is going to be smaller, so we're gonna be pushing the surface less, meaning that R will actually decrease. In fact, we can be moving at a speed to completely eliminate R if we wanted to. Let's try and word this as well. As F increases. Okay, that doesn't seem bad. Now you're entering two of the most important terms in your studies of A-level physics and in doing so it is crucial to avoid some of the biggest mistakes that I've seen A-level physics students do and this is precisely why you should watch this video right over here in which I've summarized all of them. Click over here.